did you all have a paper in front of you now for some other group uh, who has this paper uh, ah okay so any comments on this background word okay bold okay okay because it is the title of the thing uh, because it is the title of the slide it should be bold and it should be in the center okay anything else the bullets okay. I am not getting it actually font size should be smaller ok uh, anybody else has to add to what he pointed out uh, by the way which group is this who did that ok ok any comments on what he said you did not use uh, center alignment for the title because that was the theme which was allowing you the left alignment ok anything else because sometimes the title may be long and it may not fit into the thing so left aligned is one way of doing it but obviously for some some uh, slides which are low on text then you feel that it is all in one quadrant of the entire slide and you do not feel that balance is achieved right so I think that is what he was trying to commute uh, communicate from that that the, there is no balance in the slide that is why it is looking tilted towards one side right but uh, I had one more uh, observation maybe uh, I do not know how many people pointed it out uh, this uh, you talk about existing systems in this slide ah ok so it is given half baked condition ok fine so there is no complete uh, completion is not happening ok but uh, ideally what will you do then you will you will uh, enlarge these short forms and uh, tell us what it is about right ok great ok anybody had this slide from the same presentation right <laughs> who had this one ok any comments bullets are same ah ok ok some topic are bold and main topic is not bold no so these are sub bullets so self organized adaptive and level of supervision are the three the main heading is not bold but sub bullets are bold ok ah, what is your take on that <laughs> template was like that probably their answer is <laughs> right so uh, it brings to an important point that templates are good but it should also be suitable for the content you are trying to communicate so template should not ride your decisions but you should override decisions what you want to communicate that is one secondly uh, <coughs> this is slightly off the shelf point but still I wanted to mark it here is that whenever you present some data you have to have references for that so something like this which is important now 4 percent is uh, is a percentage in the pie about something which is important data and that is why you will be driving your entire presentation after that now on that 4 percent right you are showing at no no uh, you will be going from the but anyway this percentage is took from somewhere right you did not generate it yourself right so when you took it from somewhere you have to acknowledge immediately because for of two reasons one is for copyright and second is to give authenticity to your slide that it is not something off the cuff remark you are saying that ok 52 percent practice and drill is important so it is not your comment but it is somebody else's research comment so that helps ok who had this slide who has this slide right now table minus slide who has this slide Did, ah, ok comments Any comments? Huh? Looks nice. 
Oh, okay, looks nice is the comment. Anyway, anybody can find a problem in this slide? Ah, too much text is the thing. How many people agree too much text? Some agree. Okay, any other problem? Pardon me, I am not getting. Who is it speaking? You can raise a hand and I can see there. The font is? Very small. Okay. Then? There are some typos like there is no space between manners and continued ka bracket and uh, but the one important point is if you read all the comments written here in the slide most of them are about some action or something to be done and this is very difficult to analyze using just text. So put your napkin in your lap. Now when you revisit restaurants, you have seen so many people using that napkin in so many different ways, even if it is put on their lap. So how do you tell them that if this is the best table manner that put your napkin in this way on your lap, then the text is not enough because you cannot imagine what is that ideal way that uh, author is trying to tell you. Similarly, a used spoon is left in a large soup plate or on the plate under the soup bowl. Now left or right is not written or uh, under the soup bowl or like under the plate, so uh, how do you place it. So these kind of things are very visual in nature, immediately you, you demand a visual for that. By the way, who is the, which is the group did that? Uh, table manners group, okay. Yeah, so there is a pointer for you on that. In fact, I saw a couple of images later on about ideal table conditions and all that and I agree to the point that you may not have images for all these situations. Like, uh, how to place napkin on your lap, you don't have a photograph of that and what will you do it. But as a assignment part right now when you are submitting, you can at least submit the ideal situation the way you can reproduce it. So you can give a image, you can just give a black box and saying that image of uh, napkin placement will come here. It is en enough for me to understand that you have understood the visual communication aspect. So it is nothing about whether you can draw, paint or photograph or something. Ah, this one. This is from the same group. Who has this page? Ah, any comments? I think some of the comments are repeated already. So too much text, you, you can ignore that. Ah. Text is not justified. Okay. Yeah, that is, uh, that is one very interesting comment. So how many people prefer justified text in a presentation uh, versus Justified text in a printed matter, right? So, how many people for justified text in presentation? Small points. Ha, huh, okay. So, you should have uh, crisper and smaller sentences. And no, uh, you said something. Ha, huh, so if, if that sentence is written in a proper manner, it's small enough, then you don't require actually justification at all. And obviously because you have left aligned as the, as the alignment deci uh, decided in this presentation, then we will not go for justification. Also justification is done mostly because of the columns. If you remember, uh, you write these uh, technical papers and they will be always in two columns. So most of the time because of demarcation of this area, justification has come into being. So that is where it is used the best because if you have two columns, then ideally you should have uh, justified. Uh, okay, huh. who had this slide? Okay, comments on this. This is the last slide, and this is this is a very uh, this is only a uh, representative picture. I nothing uh, seriously uh, commenting about it. But I have seen this kind of a picture at the end of most of the presentations. So I just wanted to know your views on this. Okay, comments. First, we'll get the group who has the paper in hand. Is the picture is? It's not centered, okay, fine. Anything else? Slightly more uh, from a bird's, po bird's point of view. Huh? Too much informal, yes, that is a very valid point. So you are talking about table manners and then you give a picture of, uh, I don't know whether it is ideal table manners or a spoof of <laughs> table manners. Or <laughs> so why this picture is there? So is, is there a motivation behind this picture? The group who did that. Okay, fine. So, so the point was when you when you finish a presentation on table manners and finally you show this picture, 
what will people carry back so you would like to leave them with something which will uh, which will emphasize the entire presentation right so this is how uh, so uh, according to the type of visuals what type of visual was that so if you remember last time's presentation is it decorative just used for fun purpose right okay <laughs> should i have shown a empty plate if if the just we can move this picture to the beginning of the exactly so this can be a good opening picture to say the to emphasize the problem itself that why you need table manners otherwise you will have these situations very often ha huh, bits who has this picture right now who has this paper ah okay you have <laughs> nobody took it <laughs> so if you can comment on it what so this is about uh, popular myths or something like that right the title which is the group myths group ah okay so ah uh, yeah you comment on that you didn't understand uh, the uh, what did you and the image you can see right it's a cat and <laughs> what is the title of that right you didn't you are confused <laughs> okay even i was confused by the way so anyway tell me so i had the three pictures in a row right Ca cat crossing the road i understood that then uh, having a black cat as a pet was some second picture and third picture was confused black cat so i didn't understand what was that so is it a myth i am not aware of this myth at least okay tell me more about it yeah ah it's from the cat's point of view that you are trying to explain the myth is it okay how many people buy this argument uh, yeah okay you buy this argument because okay <coughs> but if i get it right so you are presenting popular myths right and then you give a example of how cat is a symbol or maybe a, a element of popular myths and you show some examples of cat crossing and but then you show confused black cat so so Uh, don't you think the audience will get confused <laughs> rather than the cat getting confused anyway so uh, that was one but there is another one okay medical myths who has this paper right now somebody had okay ha huh. comments too much text too many bullets okay okay the the size of the tech uh, font there is no difference between the title and the bullet so almost all same okay anything else first ha huh, first uh, alphabet is not capitalized right okay english problem anything else anybody else wants to add to what is the problem in this slide ha huh? then i'll give a ah uh, bolo sentences should be bit smaller okay right and uh, okay the group can you uh, can you answer some counter points for this uh, i am i am uh, giving a observation from a different perspective the, uh, all these things are already included in that but one more thing is that when you are presenting about myths as the title of the thing so you are actually addressing very very popular myths and uh, everybody agrees uh, when they see that oh is it a myth i, I am not sure whether whether actually eating carrots will improve i said so it's a popular myth coming along for lot many years so when i hear this kind of myths uh, sentences and i i'm told that this is a myth the next thing i want to know that what is reality then right so if if this is presented as myth versus reality then it will have more impact on the audience that you you really blast their myths that okay when you put this sentence that wait 30 minutes after eating before you swim is a myth then what's the reality so that will balance the whole thing rather than talking about myths alone that was one of the point do you agree with this okay uh who has uh, this slide right now anybody ah okay any comment this is about uh, 
brain drain i suppose which is the group which did that yeah okay so let's hear from them first of all what are their problems okay go on pardon me text is ah okay yeah that english problem is there there too many uh, big paragraph in between uh, that is now let's let's try to go over these two comments all the time so every slide i am getting these two comments definitely anything else <laughs> three different paragraphs but they wanted three different bullets right these are three different bullets serious issue is no return on subsidized education i think they wanted to complete that but uh, there was no time for that but then <coughs> there is some other point and there is last it's something negligible return on investment okay ha the gap between the title uh, edge and the title plus the bullets is uneven which is causing a problem okay it is it's not clear whether the first and second line is is it similar okay what is nearer to each other so that's actually called a principle of proximity so things which are nearer to each other will be considered as a group so whenever you put things nearer to each other that i always will be having a problem and this comes especially when you put in pictures or something so you put a title to that and press enter and there is a same difference distance between picture and the title in a row so you don't know whether this title applies to this picture or the picture below so that's a proximity issue always but i had one more thing is <coughs> so it's something negligible return for investment made by the country so such kind of statements you need to substantiate it with some figures or some references so that will make more impact so people will buy this argument yes it is correct but is it your comment or your observation or it's validated by something else yeah i have another important point to make <coughs> the, the the experience which i get when i look at this slide is anger hmm anger because when anybody stands in front of strong about this point because i would like it to get bored uh, uh, get home but when when people who are in the position of authority look at these kind of things why the hell can't he have sorted this out that's the attitude that comes right why take liberties with my time why waste my time so to get to cross your t's and dot your i's and put everything in a nice way puts the audience at a, that look he respects or she respects us respects us enough to take you know cognizance care, of it right care on their presentation the way they dress the way they present and so on that subliminal language right if you have a don't care attitude the audience will get very angry if we are very sloppy in our presentation you have every right to be angry so put yourself in the other place to understand what is going on in a presentation okay am i right yeah in the Sorry. same note actually this one this one gets on the same thing is it uh, who, who did that uh, uh, who has the paper right now how oh, you have the paper what's comment so by the way this is not meant to be a personal comment to whichever group i'm saying this is a generalized comment about many presentations which we which we experience yes okay. so i'm taking a lot of baggage with me to <laughs> okay yeah Yeah, so they had a slide of pros before this slide, so. No, no, Mr. Chairman, but it's not past tense. Then ignore those who live nearby or those nearby are ignored. Okay. Ah, because of. Ah, so you. Okay, okay. So the tense is has to be that this happens after you use it, right? That type of tense. Okay. Any did anybody spot a major contradictory feature in the slide itself? Background color and. Okay, that is about. Uh, <coughs> about the back yeah uh, any what is the problem about background and color very dark that's okay okay so just to give you a tip uh, the rule says that when you have a dim lit hall 
then typically you can use <coughs> dark background with white text and when you have a brightly lit hall then you use white background and black text so that's just a tip because the thing came out Want a bit small? Probably I am not zooming in. In uh, this should be like this, so probably it should be okay. But uh, can you spot a contradiction? So let's not waste any more time on this. The contradiction is that the con says that forget formal language and grammar, and they type with the t small, and the continued use in uh, some uh, diff very different uh, way. So the contradiction is itself in the presentation. So, so what Sir was just now pointing out. So when I, I see this kind of thing and you will be very very aggressively uh, putting this point forward then people will see that uh, not happening in your own slides so that is something you have to be sure about. By the way which group was this? Ah, so have you taken note of that? I will skip couple of uh, yeah this one I just uh, just read the the second sentence oh, okay. Just read the second sentence. Oh, sorry, here. So just read the second sentence. Can you read it in one go? It's tough, right? It's really tough. And um, but when you see this, it also tells you it might not be right, but it gives you an indication that it's cut paste. Yes. or paraphrase it mainly or paraphrase. paraphrasing will be helping and okay if you want to use definition of hate or for some reason which is already published then the easier part is that put it into quotes and give a reference that is perfectly all right but uh, you cannot put it as a bullet point written by me that is not possible so that was the comment okay. No, no, copy paste from your own file is not considered as a <laughs> plagiarism. But this, anyway. this line can be or the gap can happen also. No, the gap, I am just talking about the, the length of the sentence was so much and we could see that it was, uh, it was not written uh, in that fashion. So, it was supposed to be a different point to be made. So, if it was presented as a quote by somebody, could have been easier, right. <coughs> Okay, this one, one I will just take this, uh, who did this by the way, which group did this, campus, ha, huh, okay, use Prezi right, okay great, but uh, what is the problem with this design, uh, who has the paper right now, you have it right, okay, what is the problem with this design, alignment of bullets, alignment of bullets, so, so this one, but this is a sub bullet right, okay, that is why it is indented, but what is the problem. It is a same level bullet point, it is the same bullet, I did not get what you said. So uh, okay, I, I have an observation, before uh, you have say any comments on this, pardon me, face of the, ah, space is not, exactly that was the point that while you choosing a template because it is already a square, uh, rectangle thing what you get in a presentation you are limiting with a circle now where anything goes beyond this area will be very difficult to read because it will have this circle line in between coming and then you are forced to put it inside which will reduce the font size further. So there is no point in putting it unless and until you are like talking about something circle of life or something like that. So apart from that you do not have to use. Right, so just indentation is not because ha. Huh, so that was that was their observation probably which they could not um, uh, communicate it in the way they wanted to say. But uh, uh, they were uh, trying to say that the bullets are going in a curvature mode just because they have to follow the circle. Yeah, this one, uh, this one I had addressed last time, but I did not see anybody following this. What was the problem here? Yeah. Too much alpha, uh, too much numbers. Yeah, it could have been represented in a histogram or pie chart. Also, anything else on this? 
what is not there source, source, source is not submitted maybe yeah uh, not submitted. anything else source is mentioned yes so that's why i ignored that point and but uh, what i ha uh, what should the viewers look at out of all these so many numbers if there is something you can just highlight one so suppose it is about india you are talking about then just highlight that particular strip and i will ignore the rest or if i want i can compare it but uh, giving me all these figures i don't know how many 15 multiplied by 4 so all 60 figures i am not able to look at it at a one go and then understand what you are trying to say uh yeah this is also very interesting thing uh, we'll take this last and then we'll move ahead because we have to go with the impress part today anybody has this paper now ha huh. font size uh, okay let's ignore font size and number of words these two are gone now go move ahead it's imbalanced one line is like ha huh. kaudang and river is compared together so it should it should be presented in that way okay but do, do you find repetitiveness here they yeah one place it is capital one place it is small but if they had to say that kaudang and river are two major resources where kaudang gives you manures and biogas and river gives you irrigation and power generation if that is the sentence you want to say why do you have to write this so many times you can just have a slide with two two blocks of text one about kaudang and explain kaudang one about river and this sentence actually has to be said by person you need not write there that kaudang and river are two major resources so this is something the script was supposed to be why i took this time to to show these images is because i was very much seriously rethinking about the past lectures what happened well i could not see reflection of those in these slides at least i am not sure about other slide because i saw some of them were really good lakshman resha somewhere uh, so why i wanted to show you that is uh, people have taken efforts in the thought process definitely in some way but as you see there were some lapses on the thought process also where people are not given enough thought in terms of uh, explaining that but there were also issues regarding the visual communication part the grammar part the text part and i was expecting after so much of assignments from prakash vaidya and others to get the english thing right it's becoming still it is recurring into the assignments what we see so that was the reason i just thought of stopping over for some time and at least uh, showing a mirror to you all to see where you are right now going ahead with so that was the reason so i hope you get the point and uh, let's just uh, okay so this is what we did now find and fix the problems uh we did this and uh, so i hope all the groups have taken notes of the comments discussed here and uh, you know what changes are expected from that <coughs> but going ahead with the impress part so we had seen the execute part and we had seen uh, the plan part but we were we are now at a point where we want to discuss the impress part that after we are done with that so i saw some presentations in bare black and white right now which is fine and some presentations have went ahead and selected a theme or a template and tried to uh, give the text in that but uh, within that i just thought of uh, touch basing two issues today one is about color schemes and one is about typography because i feel these are one of the uh, glaring problems so tell me uh, in color in terms of color which color suits this word and why gray okay somebody said gray why for the background it's a good match okay why not black so maybe the reason i can add to it is like military has to camouflage with that or something no okay any other color green why green that's the color of army okay okay which which color suits this word then the colors are same i'm changing the word blue blue, blue. 
blue for soft okay hold on to that any reason for that ha huh? blue is a cool color probably ha huh? anybody as a reason for soft being blue any light color would be better than this okay hold on to that the colors are same the word is again changed now blue for space black okay because it signifies darkness space okay which color gray because it's neutral okay the point of all this thing is because and you you said this keyword somewhere that it has to do with the expression of that it has to do with the mood of the thing and color always carries a mood and color always carries a expression color has some convention so somebody said space means dark and space means dark blue or uh, red means danger or so these are conventions associated with colors so especially while using colors in your presentation be sure about all these meanings what are associated with a color and most of the time if it is chosen in a wrong way then it signifies something else and uh, i have seen most of the time red as a highlight color being used like emphasize a point and use a red with that but if the word is not meant to be that then that red will have a jarring effect on your eyes for the you for the people who are attending your presentation so color with that meaning will be an important uh, thing which will go hand in hand and that's why you have to use color very very with a very uh, maybe precise choice of things so it cannot be just off the cuff because whatever palette was available i just clicked on one color and that's it i wanted some color to happen there so that should not be the case and that's why uh, i'm not going into details of what color signifies what mood and all that because uh, that's not the focus of this class but i'll just uh, give you a rough outline of uh, how does this theory come about so there are there are things which are a very commonly used schemes which are like two or more colors when they come together they form a scheme and the very very common basic rudimentary level schemes are called monochromatic or contrasting or complementary and something called triads now triads is actually any three colors but uh, there are also a uh, type of uh, formulae for making a triad but let's not go into detail of that i'm just showing an example where monochromatic will have shades of the same color used all over similarly contrast will have a contrasting color with that now this contrast theory is slightly complicated so uh, the easier way i can just tell you is you have this uh, r g and b uh, so actually it's uh, in um, color theory it is not r g b in uh, our um, digital world it's all r g b but actually it is yellow uh red and uh, blue and uh, when this is one triangle the combination of this becomes another triangle which becomes orange and green and violet so contrast colors is any pair which is uh, across each other so that becomes a contrasting pair and it's it's proven that anything used with these contrasting colors is always good uh provides the enough contrast so i have shown here a blue and orange based on the same theory but when you talk about triads typically people have people have a combination of any two colors on this side versus one color on the other side that's also perfectly fine color scheme as such and you uh like i showed in the earlier slides there should be meaning and the conventions have to be followed with all these filters in place it's pretty difficult most of the time that what color should you choose for a particular thing and i the reason i use uh, the way i use it is i go by the meaning of the whole thing and then just settle down for the color scheme so the very very uh, uh, top level guidelines are that better the contrast better the readability so typically if you are using a white background you have to avoid uh, these two shades right away yellow and orange are not meant for white background anything else will do uh, in a much better way and so on and so forth you can go in other ways similarly this vivid vivid colors is a very standard problem of most of the presentation they use like 
100 percent red or 100 percent pink or 100 percent fluorescent green type of color which is very jarring to eyes. I am unable to create that color maybe in vivid here, but I can see it on the monitor here. So, these kind of problems will always have a rather different impact which you are not wanting to have. So, the scheme has to suit your topic is the most important one line guideline I can tell you, but it is easier than it is said than doing it actually because you need to go through all these things when you are deciding on colors. Any comments on colors part people have any questions on that or should I move to typography. In typography we have a huge range of fonts nowadays, but the typical classification of fonts is done in three different families font families and I have shown an example of 1, 2, 3 with that and the difference is about, about the part where you have uh, this serif which is which is this part actually when this is uh, or rather uh, this part which is uh, which is blocked right now. So, there is no serif here and versus uh, what you see here is a in times Roman what you will see here is is this part. So, that is called serif and it is said that for presentations typically use sans serif font and for printed material use a serif font. Uh, this is because of the fact and completely avoid uh, scripts font for any technical work that is uh, only left for greeting cards and uh, some very very personalized notes you have to send across. So, that is only limited for that probably do not uh, try to use any of the script fonts for any of the technical presentations, literature, documents you are writing unless until it is utterly necessary. Uh, in very very rare cases. So, you use any one of these things plus you have different emphasizing uh, aspects within that. So, you have uh, you have uh, okay, so let us do one more thing. Now, I have fonts for the same words and uh, which one which one suits this word military first how many for first and how many for second, how many for third none and fourth yeah quite a bit ok. So, there is a tie between second and fourth which is understandably correct. So, the fourth one looks actually kind of slightly stretched and more tough looking than the second one, but second one is also enough disciplined so to say to represent military right. For this third ok. Any other views? First which one? First ok. Why first? It has curves actually, but it does not have sharp edges actually what what you wanted to say was it does not have sharp edges you said it does not have much of curves, <laughs> but that is how ok. Ok by the way uh, which of these fonts will suit the earlier world military? Which of last one right? Because of that stencil wala impact which you want that rugged look for the military right? Which one for this? First, second, third, fourth? Second, second. second ok. Our most favorite times Roman. Any other? last ok it is the same for neutral third is most neutral right and you cannot see any neutralized thing in in the fourth one or even in the second one yeah. First one of the military what is the problem ok can anybody answer his problem why the first font face for word military is not good. Ok, so serif font typically will convey some emotion also along with it that is one argument given anybody anybody buys that argument. So, military with with this curves becomes emotional military 
anybody anybody buys that argument or anybody has a anti argument for that yeah so i will uh, i associate military with robustness and strength uh, so uh, anything which is having thin will have a problem and especially if you look at the composition of a in a serif font it will have this very very thin part here i am not sure whether this will hold if i put some weight onto this so it it immediately crumbles because i can see that it's having a very thin here so this all is associated with meaning and uh, the way you you um, comprehend the images yeah but uh, suppose you are having a passage where all different this, words are uh, yes you cannot have every every word having different font right so that time you have to go back into bird's point of view and see whether that passage means something and that something has to be associated with the relevant font on top of that let me tell you okay good point that he has raised so it can't be having too many fonts in that same presentation because that one for paragraph was related to military i have added uh, maybe this uh, um, what you call the uh, stencil font in that and uh, somewhere it was casual i have used a the script there so it can't be like that for a presentation definitely you need to have a uniformity in terms of fonts but when you are putting lines like especially one line or a one word or something that time you can use fonts so i am coming to the font guidelines where a typographic guidelines yeah so you are getting out the font is there any specific motive for using different color here no 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 there was no there was no thing to do with colors actually it was my mistake i could have done with same color and different things but uh, like most of you i also copy pasted and from the earlier slide and i wanted to actually the next question i wanted to ask was there is is there association between the font and the color so for example the point i wanted to ask was that you you all were okay with the green color for the military so if i write in the green color the military in this font will you buy it because the color is correct no so the point which was to be discussed further was that just color is not good enough to convey the message it will should be accompanied by appropriate font also and vice versa so just a appropriate font with a wrong color will also have a problem for example if you say uh, the soft is uh, the pink color can be associated with soft but the moment i put it into a stencil font it is not soft anymore it's hard right so that is the point i wanted to make out that's why i retained the color code with that and uh, by the way there is a, a combination of both the things in appropriate manner is the only way out there is no there is no and or here so there is this is uh, there is no or here there is and this and that okay so one last thing is about uh, emphasis and everybody knows the options so if you have to emphasize the word emphasis in this sentence how will you do it is this how many people for this how many for this how many for this and how many for this 1 2 3 4 one 1 okay 2 lot of 2 3 4 not many for 3 4 yeah so uh, so why color and not bold it's easy to see that emphasis right and uh, anybody why uh, why underline a lot of people said underline uh, nobody said underline by the way why italics lot of people preferred italics so actually uh, what i say depending on context i will say uh, from color to bold to italics okay so depending on the context i will use any one of these yeah. right the problem happens when people it use it like this they bold it they italic it and then they change the color and they also underline it <laughs> that's where the problem lies so uh, you have four different tools to combat the problem and you use all four of them on the same problem is not a good idea so that's why i i wanted to ask this specific question that if it can be sufficed only with italics why use bold and why use why complicate life of the reader so that's that's the point uh, i wanted to just bring out out of this so this is uh, this is actually going directly with some of the observations from the slides you guys have put in so uh, just go back and relook at the slides and that will be uh, probably continuing we will be taking up uh, in the next class also some more discussion on top of that i uh, so how many people want to uh, 
re revisit their own presentations or you would like to uh, change somebody else's presentation the how how should that be you know maybe they they should do their own they should stick to their own okay but we had a uh, open discussion today and you have taken notes about that so probably that will be uh, useful for you i have a Okay, so just to sum up the typography part, uh, typically stick to lesser fonts in a complete presentation. So you can have a one one heading font and one body font, which is good enough. If you can use the the options available in the same font, it's well and good. It will be complete one font. But like some slides had the same uh, Arial. 14 point and arial 14 point for both is not a good idea so you should have that distinction definitely by virtue of either changing the font color or using a option like bold or italic or something like that then you can use font options to emphasize but use it sparingly and alignment feature left is preferred in presentations although there are some presentations which like some slides within the presentation which can go ahead with even central layout for especially for the opening slide most of the time people use it and use grid is one tip i am trying to uh, emphasize in this class because i have seen not many people using the grid feature available in any of the presentation tools beam maybe it is powerpoint or open office or acrobat or whatever you use so if you use grid these kind of issues won't happen about where are you placing your points so whether it is aligned with the top it's not aligned with the top is it at first first indent or the second indent especially the yeah that's the grid and <laughs> so he was just trying to explain it to somebody how the grid looks like and uh, it also solves the problem like the balance thing which we saw in couple of slides that everything is in one quadrant of the entire thing because the grid also has the first four major quadrant markings so once you switch on the grid you will get this thing first and then you will get these dotted lines but you can immediately see whether your entire presentation lies only in this area and this entire area is is open to problems so this kind of things will be easily seen and felt if you switch on the grid so that is the reason i thought i give this tip and not many people use grid as a tool while making the presentation so that's a useful thing you can try out uh <coughs> i wanted to do that but we'll stick to so not not by other group we uh, suggest that you you revisit your own presentation now and uh, see what all things are going wrong there in terms of all the three aspects the grammar part the uh, sentence formation part and then the visual design part so these three things i'm just keeping the impress part like the animation and all part for the next class so that we can we can see presentations in some format which can be useful in that place right so yeah you had uh, so the announcement was that uh, in the next class okay sir next class we will be discussing the impress and then later on we'll do the recording part okay thanks